So this video is a brief description of linear momentum and collisions. So let's consider the situation where two bodies collide with each other. So during the collision, uh, each body exerts a force on the other. And this force is known as an impulsive force because it acts for a short period of time compared to the whole motion of the objects and it's usually uh, very large, okay? So to solve collision problems by using uh, Newton's second law, it is required to know the exact form of the impulsive forces. Uh, but these forces uh, are complex functions of the collision time, uh, so it is difficult to find their exact form and would make it difficult to use Newton's second law to solve such problems. So new concepts known as momentum and impulse were introduced uh, and these concepts enable us to analyze problems that involve collisions as well as many other problems. Um, so the law of conservation of momentum is specially used in analyzing collisions and is applied immediately before and immediately after the collision. So by using the concept of linear momentum, it is not necessary to know the exact form of the impulsive forces during the collision. Um, so the linear momentum uh, P is a vector quantity uh, defined as the mass of the particle times its velocity. Uh, so this shows that a fast moving car has more momentum than a slow moving car of the same mass. Um, and another example is that a bowling ball, for example, has more momentum than a basketball uh, if both are moving at the same speed. So the SI units of momentum is kilogram times meter per second. And in component form, we may write it this way. And also we can express Newton's second law in terms of uh, momentum. So for a particle-like object of constant mass, um, sigma f is equal to ma, which is equal to m dv over dt, and m is constant, so uh, equal to dmv over dt, which is dp over dt. And this shows that the rate of change of the linear momentum of an object is equal to the resultant force acting on the object and is in the same direction of that force. So let's consider now the law of conservation of linear momentum. So it states that if the net external force acting on a system equals zero, so the system is isolated, and if there is no mass exchange with the surroundings of the system, so the system is closed, then the total linear momentum of the system remains constant. Uh, so to show this, let's consider an isolated system consisting of two particles where the only forces that act in the system are internal forces, okay? Um, so the total linear momentum of the system at any particular time is equal to P1 plus P2. So if the net force exerted uh, on particle 2 by 1 is F21, then from Newton's third law, the net force exerted on 1 by 2 is F12, um, and they are equal and opposite forces. So if we differentiate this equation with respect to time and we use Newton's second law, um, then this is equal to F12 uh, and this is uh, plus F21, which is minus F12, and this is equal to zero. Uh, and so the total uh, linear momentum of the system is constant, okay? Which means that um, the total initial linear momentum is equal to the final uh, momentum. So the linear momentum of each particle may change, but the total linear momentum of the system is the same at all times, okay? So this statement is known as the law of conservation of linear momentum, um, and it states that if the net external uh, force acting on a system is zero, then the total linear momentum of the system remains unchanged or constant. So these here are internal forces, and the net external force on the system is zero. So in component form, the total linear momentum is conserved in each direction, okay? Uh, so in solving problems involving collisions, um, 
the p initial here and p final refers to the total momentum of the system immediately before and immediately after the collision okay so for a two particle system uh, we may write the conservation uh, this way so at the initial instant each particle has a certain momentum then at the final instant each will have a different momentum but the sum uh, of both is constant okay so also from the principle of invariance the law of conservation of momentum is valid with respect to any inertial frame of reference okay and uh, as the law of conservation of energy the law of conservation of momentum is valid in relativity and in quantum mechanics so we will now discuss the concept of impulse so impulse is a quantity that defines how a certain force acting on a particle changes the linear momentum of that particle okay so let's consider a time dependent force acting on a particle then from newton's second law um, we have dp is equal to f dt uh, so if we integrate both sides we get this equation so this quantity here uh, is a vector quantity known as impulse so this is the impulse momentum theorem and in component form we may write it this way um, so it states that the impulse of a force that acts on a particle during uh, a certain time interval is equal to the change in the momentum of the particle as a result of that force okay so the more impulse a force has the more the uh, linear momentum of the particle would change okay um, and as you can see the direction of the impulse is in the same direction as the change of momentum um, so let's suppose that f has a constant direction and its magnitude varies with time according to this curve uh, then the average of f may be written this way um, and so the impulse is equal to f average times delta t so in this case f average is a constant force that gives the same impulse as this varying f okay and actually uh, in case of collisions between two objects the variation of the impulsive force that each body exerts on the other during the time of the collision um, is of this form so it's usually very large and acting during a very short time interval so let's consider two examples so in the first example we have a 50 gram uh, golf ball that is initially at rest so v initial is equal to zero and then the ball is struck by a golf club uh, so the club exerts a force on the ball that varies during a very short time interval from zero before impact to a maximum value and then back to zero when the ball is no longer in contact with the club. So suppose that the ball is given a final speed of 25 meter per second just after the impact, okay? and suppose that the time of contact with the club uh, is 7 times 10 to the minus 4 seconds um, then we want to find the average force exerted by the club on the ball and so we use the impulse momentum theorem uh, so it is uh, delta p is equal to 1.25 kilograms times meter per second and so the average force is equal to the impulse over time so uh, it is equal to 1785.7 newtons so let's consider another example so suppose that there is a cannon placed on a carriage on a horizontal surface and it fires a ball uh, with a speed of 50 meter per second and suppose that the mass of the ball is 250 kilograms and the mass of the carriage and cannon combined is 4000 kilograms so as you probably know the moment the ball gains a velocity forward uh, the cannon and carriage recoils backward and this backward motion of the cannon and carriage is a result of the conservation of linear momentum so we, here we have motion only in the x direction so the total uh, momentum is conserved in the x direction 
Um, so immediately before firing the ball, the total linear momentum is zero. And just after firing the ball, um, this is the total linear momentum, okay? And from this, we can calculate uh, the velocity of the cannon, uh, which is equal to minus 3.1 meter per second. So let's consider now uh, elastic and inelastic collisions. So as we discussed previously, when two bodies collide, they exert large forces on one another during the time of the collision, um, known as impulsive forces. And these forces are very large such that any other force present during the short time of the collision, such as friction or gravity, can be neglected. Uh, so this approximation of neglecting any other force present during the very short time of the collision is known as the impulse approximation, okay? Um, so let's suppose, for example, a golf ball is hit by a club, then the change in momentum of the ball can be assumed to be only due to the impulsive force exerted on it by the club. So the change in momentum due to any other force present during the collision can be neglected, okay? Um, so in analyzing collision problems, uh, the force in this expression here uh, can be assumed to be the impulsive force only, okay? Um, so it is uh, the impulsive force that one uh, object exerts on the other. So the neglected forces present during the collision time are external to the two-body system and the impulsive forces between the two objects during the collision are internal. And so this is why during the uh, short collision time we may consider the system uh, uh, at that time to be isolated where the net external force is zero and only internal forces exist, which are the impulsive forces. So. Uh, this implies that the total linear momentum uh, is conserved during the collision time, okay? And this enables us to apply the law of conservation of momentum immediately before and immediately after the collision. So um, P initial, uh, the initial instant is just before the collision and the final instant is immediately after the collision. So in general, for any type of collision, the total linear momentum is conserved, uh, but the collision is classified um, according if the total kinetic energy of the system is conserved or not, okay? So let's consider first elastic collision. So an elastic collision is one in which the total kinetic energy as well as momentum of the two colliding body system is conserved. So these collisions exist when the impulsive force exerted by one object on the other is conservative, okay? So a conservative force would convert the kinetic energy of one object into elastic potential energy when the two objects are in contact during the collision, and then it reconverts the elastic potential energy into kinetic energy when there is no more contact. So after the collision, each object may have a different velocity and, uh, and therefore a different kinetic energy, but the total energy as well as the total momentum of the system is constant during the time of the collision, okay? So uh, an example of this type of collision is, the, is one between billiard balls. Uh, so, in one dimension, uh, it is referred to as a head-on collision, okay? So, consider uh, two particles of masses M1 and M2 uh, experiencing an elastic head-on collision. So, if we apply the law of conservation of energy and the law of conservation of momentum, we get these two equations. So, initial is uh, just before the collision and final is just after the collision, okay? Uh, and from uh, these two equations, we may get the expression for the um, velocity, the final velocity of each uh, object, okay? So let's consider these two special cases of an elastic head-on collision, okay? So in the first case, uh, the two particles have equal masses. So uh, if we substitute here, we find that um, the final velocity of the first object uh, is equal to the initial of the second. 
and the final of the second would be equal to the initial of the first. So this means that if the particles have equal masses, they would exchange velocities. Uh, so in the second case, uh, m2 is stationary, so v2 initial is equal to zero. So in that case, uh, m2 is known as the target and m1 is uh, known as the projectile, okay? And if we substitute, we get these two equations. Um, so also we have two cases, either m1 is much larger than m2 and we get these equations, or m2 is much larger than m1. Uh, such as like a ball colliding with a wall and we get this equation. So <clears throat> the ball would uh, recoil, uh, recoil back uh, with the same speed and the wall will remain stationary. So now let's consider the case of an inelastic collision. So an inelastic collision is one in which the total kinetic energy of the two colliding uh, object system is not conserved, okay? But uh, momentum, the total linear momentum, is still conserved. So in such a collision, some of the kinetic energy of the system is lost due to deformation um, and appear as internal or thermal energy. Uh, so this means that the internal impulsive forces uh, present during the collision between the two objects are not conservative. And so the kinetic energy of the system before the collision is less than that after the collision, okay? So if the two colliding objects stick together, uh, such as in this case, then the collision is said to be, uh, to be perfectly inelastic. Uh, and also, there are some types of collisions in which the total kinetic energy after the collision occurs is greater than that before, okay? So this type of collision is known as explosive collision. Um, so let's consider now this uh, case of a perfectly uh, inelastic head-on uh, one-dimensional collision, okay? Um, so the kinetic energy of the system is not conserved, but the law of conservation of, uh, of linear momentum uh, still holds. So we apply it and we get this expression for the final um, velocity of the combined object. Uh, so let's consider now some examples. So in the first example, we have an elastic head-on collision between two marble balls, okay? And the mass and initial velocity of each is given. And from the equations of the elastic collision in one dimension, we can find the final velocity of each mass, okay? Uh, and for the second example, uh, we have a ballistic pendulum that is used to measure the speed of a bullet. So it consists of a large wooden block suspended by a light wire, okay? Uh, so the bullet is fired horizontally into the block and the collision is perfectly inelastic. So uh, the bullet is embedded within the block uh, and then the system, the whole system of the block plus the uh, bullet will swing to a height of edge. Uh, so as mentioned previously from the impulse approximation, the law of conservation of momentum gives the velocities just before and just after the collision, when the string is still nearly vertical, okay? Um, so for a perfectly inelastic collision, the total linear momentum is conserved, but the total kinetic energy is not conserved. And so we get this equation for the initial velocity uh, of the bullet from the conservation of momentum. Uh, and also after the collision, uh, the energy of the bullet block uh, Earth system uh, is conserved. Okay, because the gravitational force is the only force acting in the system. Uh, so if we apply the law of conservation of momentum, we get this equation for the velocity of the bullet block system when it first started its motion, okay? And if we substitute this into this equation, we get the initial velocity of the bullet. Uh, and it is possible also to calculate the mechanical energy lost uh, and convert it into internal uh, thermal energy of the bullet block system uh, by subtracting the initial kinetic energy of the bullet uh, from the final uh, kinetic energy of the system. 
so thank you for watching please don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next video